G'day, my name is Mark and I make every piece of the pallet count. I have saved up all of these thin strips that never made it into a project. You spend a fair amount of time busting down and cleaning up all the timber, so do not waste them. I can never remember these challenge hashtags. Hashtag springtime box maker challenge. Okay. It's hashtag scrap wood build off. What did he say? Righto, it's the hashtag springtime scrap wood box makers build off 2022. Most of these off cuts are from pallets. The really, really dark stuff is the leftover decking from the desk build project. I'm gonna laminate all of these thin strips together. I'll do it in sections and I'm gonna pick a width that works with my jointer. I glued up this entire slab over one morning just using this set of clamps. However, I did it in segments. So every hour or so I'd add to the clamp up and then I didn't have to stress about the glue open top. This particular slab, which is this long by this wide, used about two fifths of a Tommy saucepan. I also don't waste time cutting down every single pallet slat to the same length. I glue it together and then I'll whip it off at the end. I'll then rip the slabs down to a width that I can then use the table saw to resaw these bricks down into thinner usable pieces. I did go a little bit wide with my bricks. So rather than load up the saw, I'll flip it over and then cut the other side in two passes to get my veneers. The bonus is the blade is further away from the meaty things. So although a lot of that original slab is now sawdust, I've almost tripled the surface area of these beautiful, glorious, some might say magical pallet wood laminations could have ever originally covered. I don't even know if that sentence makes sense, but you know what I'm saying. Alrighty, I want to make something cool. 3D pallet wood cubes. And it is easier than it looks. It's just a lot of diamonds cut with the same size sides. A little trial and error, few adjustments as you go. And you'll be laughing like a big gray hairy spider. I do love a good pallet wood waterfall feature. So that is the plan for all these little cubes. Okay, that should be enough to cover just the top layer of this box. I've got almost the same amount left over. I wanna save that for another project. Given how much work goes into producing these cool veneers, I think I'd rather make something else cool another time. It's also very hot in the shed, so I'm going to take these inside and do the sticky tape part to create my little diamonds in the aircon and go and make sure Freddy is not getting too lame. Thought I'd treat myself to a new uh, sauce bottle lid. I knew that was going to happen, but I didn't stop. Dick it. I also love a good chamferization. So I'm going to create this cladding appearance by ripping down, cleaning up, resawing all those good things out of some pallet wood pine.
These little clamps are pretty awesome for making a DIY track saw. I think they'd be tops for a straightening jig, and I might try that one in my next video. I think I went about three years before I knew the benefit of this low fence. Fair dinker. My original plan was to biscuit joint all of these pieces of the box together. A couple of the side panels uh, turned out to be OSB with a very thin layer of ply and the biscuit cutter pretty much just smashed up the OSB. So I'll just type on this box together and I'll figure out some reinforcement later. Project to this point has used one Tommy sauce bottle worth of glue. I've got this nice hardwood off cuts. They're all the leftover bits from this workbench, so I'm going to cut those down into some thin strips to start working on the edge capping for the box. I am clearing out lots of shit in the shed. Happy days. This is my reinforcement idea. Overlapping edge capping with, you guessed it, more glue. So I'll make my way around this box and make it pretty groovy. Cut a few miters. Feel like a real woodworker. More glue, more clamping. Always going smoothly. I think the humidity is getting to my brain because I never make mistakes. I've got to redo all the miters on the top side. I set myself up for these spaces, but then I didn't think about the opposite side. Um, so therefore, they're all short by about that much. <sighs> okay, uh, I'm back on track, making my way around the top with the motto, like an old school suitcase, if you will. Alrighty, here we go. I'm going to cut the lid off this massive box on the table saw. The blue tape routine is to get a nice flat surface. I'm taking my time, nice and easy. It is safe. It is big, but it is safe. I'm sweating my freckle off in the shed, and as you can see, the blade was not quite high enough. So I had to do all that again. Okay, here's a little side hustle tip. As you start making a few projects, showing the world everything that you can do, you are going to get rando requests like this box. Custom commissions can generate great revenue. One-off individual pieces that the customer really, really, really wants you to make are worth more money. So to quickly link back to my point about using every piece of the palette, I have created enough decorative veneer to create at least two custom unique projects, and that is all going to help the side hustle bottom line. Thank you very much for watching. My next video is all about harvesting 20 pellets, what it takes and what you can get out of it. So I'll see you then.